cannabis, the word that raises eyebrows, sends our imaginations on overdrive, and kickstarts a lot of heated debates across the world. Yep, that's what we're going to talk about today. Did you know that this weed is rather misunderstood and is actually pretty non-recreational? Yep, you can make clothes with it, build homes, fuel vehicles, and even save lives. In fact, the super plant is an $11.2 billion market opportunity globally. That's why the Bombay Hemp Company is building an enterprise around industrial cannabis, and they are the first to do so in India. Their seven co-founders were once college friends. Welcome to the show on Entrepreneurs Transforming the World. Perceptions are hard to change. So is setting up an entire ecosystem for products that did not exist before. The journey has been convoluted, but today Boheko's products such as clothes, handloom fabrics, accessories, health supplements, medicinal and wellness products and superfoods have all been retailing across India, dispelling myths and creating awareness about the benefits of hemp. Here's a virtual conversation with two of Boheko's seven founders, Chirag and Yash, on what makes their venture so unique. Chirag, Yash, it's great to have you on the show, two of the seven founders at Boheko. Welcome to this virtual conversation. No, thank you. The pleasure is ours. I'm really looking forward to this. I know it was in seven of you sitting in a hostel room and smoking up that, you know, that started this. So, you know, where did it all start? One of my co-founders, Jahan, uh, he was visiting his family in Australia and he came across this really small town called Margaret River. Uh, that town, very small, quaint little town, which was thriving on two things. One was grapes for wine and uh, the other was hemp for everything else. Uh, so he came back like an excited kid. He came back with a lot of products, right? Shirts and body lotion and shoes and all kinds of products. He's like, guys, this is what hemp can do. This is what it can do. And that idea really excited us, right? And 60% of our workforce is in agriculture, but the contribution of agriculture is just less than 15%. That didn't make sense. So we said, okay, we need to get a lot of young people also to come back to agriculture. Uh, and we realized the fundamental problem was that people were getting away from agriculture because it wasn't sexy enough, for lack of a better word, right? And what better crop than cannabis to bring everyone together <laughs> and, and make agriculture this amazing go-to uh, industry? You've mentioned that the focus for Boheko is health and wellness and apparel, right? Yeah. So with hemp as the key ingredient, what is what is the market opportunity we're looking at here? Cannabis as a crop is, uh, you know, very old, but the modern day hemp and cannabis industry is just about 30 years young, right? So, and it's already touted to be a trillion dollar super crop. Of course, in India, the crop has been used since times immemorial, 2000 BC, right? Uh, and uh, India has 38 million active cannabis users as we speak. So the opportunity is great. In fact, one very interesting stat is that 30% of cannabis that gets consumed in India in a year gets consumed on wholly alone, right? Uh, so that says a lot about the Indian market. And of course, uh, in India, the recreational side of cannabis uh, is rather counterintuitive compared to rest of Asia, where re the recreational side of uh, usage of cannabis is a little more than the medical uh, use uh, owing to our spiritual and cultural relation with this crop. Right. But I think once regulations open up in the medical category, I think the numbers will kind of readjust. Here's a closer look at Boheko's two primary business lines, health and wellness and fashion and apparel. Boheko sells via 70 boutiques across India, via e-commerce platforms such as Amazon and its own brand websites. Its strong digital presence has helped Boheko thrive even during the pandemic. The brand has two consumer-focused websites, bohekolife.com and belabel.in, which offer fashion and wellness products. And on the B2B front, there's hempfabriclab.com and boheko.org for collaborations with designers and creators and for other business engagements. I've used the hemp seed oil I've been using since almost a year, year and a half now. Um, it is a great product, Helps in it helps me with some anxiety. If you're a gym going person, uh, it helps in muscle recovery. 
So yes, it's been a great experience. I've used the hemp hearts and the powders, just knowing that their nutrition benefits. Um, they're great. I use them in my smoothies and salads, and it's 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 a great addition to have. So Bohico was the and is the leader in uh, hemp research in India. So definitely. Uh, you know, if I had to get anything hemp related, it would have had to be through them. When I was doing my research, I read quite a bit about uh, how much they were investing in uh, research regarding to hemp, uh, which is what helped me, uh, you know, finalize my purchase. As well as the guys from Bohico, they were really helpful in, uh, you know, holding my hand in getting hemp uh, to India for uh, pets. What were the initial few pushbacks you experienced? I mean, the biggest challenge was the lack of awareness and lack of acceptance, right? Uh, the I mean, the most influential people for our first four or five years of the company were uh, the policymakers and the scientists, right? Uh, we wanted to really align science and policy because that was going to be the base of this industry. So whenever you went to at least the policymakers, they were looking at this crop as a problem, right? And thereby, they mm. treated it like a problem. When we went to them, right, these young 20-something-year-olds, when they, we went to them with like a shirt, a packet of food and a brick and put it in front of them, and we said, this is what the problem in your backyard can really do. It's actually a solution. Why don't we look at, you, you know, really creating an industry out of it? If your problem is the illicit narcotic use of this crop, there are ways to deal with it. Instead, why don't you harvest the fiber and give it to the local cottage industry to make like handloom fabrics and there, it's a source of uh, livelihood. So tell me about how you're building a value chain around cannabis. So when we started out, we always um, aspired to be India's most dominant cannabis player. And when we know that, uh, you know, you want to legitimize an industry, you have to bring together all, all its aspects in reality. And uh, that's when we started working on the supply chain. We wanted to make sure there was adequate infrastructure for farmers to actually build an industry for themselves, you know, start cultivating, processing this fiber, and then taking it to market. And of course, um, this means that we're not only bringing uh, research together, we're not only bringing policy together, but it also means that we're getting customers to know about this crop. For example, there are so many uh, applications that can be facilitated with this crop, Yeah, whether it is uh, in the space of uh, health and wellness, whether it is textiles, or for that matter, we've got these uh, aspirations of actually making um, supercapacitors, I mean, batteries that actually Tesla and Apple can use uh, with uh, made from ca uh, carbon nano sheets, which are made from uh, hemp fiber and the graphene that, that is used in it. Or for that matter, the inner panelings of the BMWs and the Lotuses of the world can actually come from the hemp fiber. So there are so many of these applications that we can conquer. But of course, we are taking, taking it all uh, one step at a time. We're first focusing on ensuring that we're the dominant players in the health and wellness category by ensuring there's a new way of living uh, from a nutrition and lifestyle point of view that we can offer the end customer as well as uh, ensuring that we have a, a fully set up textile ecosystem in India where an indigenous yarn can be created out of this uh, particular fiber just like the linens and the cottons there are uh, and there is a proper fashion industry that exists on the back of a textile assembled value chain that Pohiko has played a large part. With Fabric, what we're trying to do is we're enabling makers and creators exactly. truly adopt hemp. Yeah. Um, people who are not aware of it, it is quite a bit of an educational angle that we are taking. Mm -hmm. But the aim is that at the end of it, we finally replace cotton at yeah. some point. So right. trying to do the good that we try to do. Having seen considerable success in categories such as clothes, handloom fabrics, accessories, health supplements and wellness products, Boheco is extending their product line and building ambitious revenue streams for the future by investing in research to create industrial and medicinal grade cannabis. The startup has already come up with the first licensed hemp leaf extract based product, the CBD oil, which helps with chronic aches and pains and treats a variety of disorders of the mind and the body. What's a big, hairy, audacious goal? I'd say that the the audacious goal that we're working towards is really creating um, that on-ground value uh, 
uh, which can benefit everyone attached to this crop. Um, the farmers, the scientists, uh, you know, the policymakers. India really has an opportunity to create a massive industry. Um, India can be, I mean, the technologies of the future or the products of the future can be powered in the fields of India. So that, I'd say, is the audacious goal that we're looking at achieving. Bahiko has kick-started a hemp revolution in India by building and redefining an entire ecosystem around hemp. This includes grower communities, researchers, manufacturers, sellers and buyers. Today, their success has inspired over 40 Indian enterprises to foray into cannabis-based products across industries such as health supplements, designer wear, paper, bioplastics and more. But it's never easy to start up and build a business in a market where there are few or no current day examples to follow. I think a lot of business partnerships don't work out. So it's amazing when they do work out, right? Yeah, absolutely. What, what's been your biggest learning in oh, this wow. journey, on this entrepreneurial journey? Wow, my biggest learning actually, I can just one very straight line to be patient and persistent at the same time. Right. Really be patient to reach the end goal, but be persistent with the smaller goals that in order to mm -hmm. achieve that. So I mm -hmm. think that is my single most biggest actually learning that I've had uh, from, you know, working at Bohico. Working with this crop really challenges your patience um, and uh, you just need to stick the, to the course and really achieve the things that you've envisioned as a unit. Has it ever, ever been difficult to align on things? Seven people, seven opinions, maybe uh, different backgrounds, contexts. Uh, you know, not everyone is as risk-taking as, as some of the others are, you know. So of course, of course, out? absolutely. So uh, we, you know, especially in the starting days when we were still getting used to each other and getting used to, you know, entrepreneurship as a whole, there were a lot more friction. But now it's a lot better. Uh, and that core, the core reason for that is that everyone within the organization has a core responsibility and accountability area, right? We've divided ourselves in different functional roles, as well as we occupy a certain space in these different uh, businesses. So if you have that autonomy and if you have the trust of your other the co-founders it becomes relatively easy to work with uh, of course we're one unit but uh, we're all accountable for different things uh, and that really you know helps solve this entire puzzle because you don't want to step in someone else's turf and you want to give them that freedom to really take this up and yeah that uh, trust in each other that faith in each other to really deliver on your area is something that we still hold very close to us even till date and that has gotten us this far otherwise in fact the biggest question that people ask how are you all still together you know <laughs> what, what's really happening yeah. and yeah. this is the main reason for that Chirag Yash great having you on the show it's been super inspiring to hear about sort of the entire ecosystem and platform that you're building around cannabis and uh, you know you're young you started off early seven years seven of you it's I'm sure you've you know, there've been ups and downs, but you stayed together and you've come this far and I wish you all the very best. It's super inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. The pleasure has been uh, completely ours and thank you to the entire crew for making this happen. Cheers. Cheers.